Hey everyone, my name is Alexander Hustings and I'm a PhD student at the Institute for Genomic Statistics and Bioinformatics in Bonn. And I'll be presenting our work on improving deep facial phenotyping for ultra-rare disorder verification using model ensembles. Since we're working with ultra-rare disorders, we use the curated dataset Gestalt Matcher Database. This is a fair dataset containing photos of people with genetic disorders, among which, most importantly for our work, frontal face photos. If you're interested and would like to know more, please have a look at the website. The dataset is split up into frequent and rare disorders. A disorder is labeled as frequent if there are seven or more patients, and labeled as rare if there are fewer than seven. Only frequent disorders are used during training, while testing was done on both frequent and rare disorders. As such, we're looking for an approach that is able to cluster similar disorders, even unseen ones. A big problem with the dataset, however, are the long tail distributions. Only very few classes have more than 50 patients, and that's even before splitting the data into training, validation, and test sets. The predecessor to our work was Gestalt Matcher by Xi et al. Though their work was modern in the field of genetics, there are some methods that are outdated, such as the AlexNet-like model architecture from 2012, or a lack of contrastive loss. They did, however, already use the penultimate layer of their network to allow unseen disorders to be clustered. They did so by encoding a gallery set and later using cosine similarity to match undiagnosed patients to diagnose ones within the feature space. In our approach, we choose to update most of the outdated methods used in Gestalt Matcher. First, we decided to use an approach similar to ArcFace, using an updated architecture and contrastive loss. Next, we replaced the transfer learning face recognition dataset with a much larger and more diverse one, Lint360K. And lastly, we improved the robustness of the predictions using test time augmentation and a model ensemble that combines fine-tuned disorder features with general face features. First, we compared the old architecture with the new one using the old transfer learning dataset Cassia WebFace and compared the general face verification and disorder verification performance before and after fine-tuning on GMDB. In the dataset on the right, we see that the new ARC phase before fine-tuning significantly outperforms old models on both LFW and GMDB. After fine-tuning, we see that ARC phase greatly improved the performance on GMDB frequent. However, the performance on GMDB rare decreased. This was unexpected, and next we look at why this was the case. When analyzing the top 5 accuracy on GMDB frequent and GMDB rare, we see that the model is fitting too much towards the training data and learning general facial features in the process. As such, we decided to combine the general face verification model, which performs well on unseen disorders, with our disorder verification models, which perform well on seen disorders. Next, we had a look at the influence of using different transfer learning datasets. Recent face recognition datasets are much larger and more diverse with respect to ethnicity, age, and more. And after some experiments, glint 360 k seemed to have the best generalizability for our use case. Finally, putting everything together, we compared the performance of the old model and the new ones. Though we focus on top 1 and top 5 accuracy, as this has the highest impact in genetic counseling, we also included the top N accuracy on the frequent and rare sets to show the overall improvement. As can be seen from the table and the figures, our approach significantly outperforms Xi et al's Gestalt Matcher on every split. Thanks everyone for listening. If you have any further questions, I'll be glad to answer them now, via email or through our GitHub repo.